Hi everyone, this is your Chess Puzzler and welcome to the channel. Any game you choose to watch from the Top Chess Engine Championship is going to simply be magical. Some engines may not be able to utilize or cause, but all the power they're given, but pick out any game and you will see the immense difference between these games and human games. I think once you watch a few engine games, these human games look very sad and that is no wonder if you just check out the engine Zelos and then compare them to that of humans. In one word, no match. Well, that's two, but who cares? Okay, what I have today for you is simply jaw dropping. This is game 140 between Komodo and Stockfish, and I'm sure this is the game of round 35. What you're about to experience is and I can't really find the word right now. Maybe magic just does it. Let's come out of the opening first. e4, c5, and when the knights came out, d4, takes, takes, knight f6, knight c3, and now d6, bishop g5, e6, queen d2, and now a6. And what you see on the board right now is the Rick the Rouser variation of the Sicilian. And if you're a Sicilian type of player, this opening is very popular. After castles and bishop d7, we are also out of the eight move opening book. So from here, the engines go about it in their own way and as they see fit. Komodo shot off with f4, allowing the bishop to come out into e7. And now with this knight maneuver, the idea is to try and get e5 in and just make something out of this position. It will be interesting to see how the game is going to unfold because it would be great if we see Stockfish castling on the opposite side, but you never know. Commodore assumes already Stockfish is going to castle short and has already launched an attack through this f4 push. Stockfish came up with b5 which is a very normal move. And the first real attempt to attack Komodo's knight, a response like a3 or a king move to b1 are very much standard, but Komodo here goes on and exchanges his own bishop to the knight on f6. Why? Though I'm not convinced recapturing this way, this is in fact the way Stockfish decided to go for, and it's quite understandably actually, because if you use your bishop to recapture, d6 is going to come rolling off. So having recaptured with g takes, we have a completely different picture emerging because we can now work out that short castles is most unlikely, and this can only be a result of this taking on f6. After this king move to b1, there comes the queen to wreck the day. Queen b6 is what Stockfish went for. And we said this many times before, you simply don't want to have your king on the same file as the opposing queen, directly or indirectly. But also, this queen to b6 is most likely preparing now Stockfish for a queenside castle. Komodo here attacked f5. Stockfish did not capture f5. There are too many reasons why. If you capture, after this bishop moved to d3, if e4 is removed, the retaking with the bishop is going to leave black devastated. Why? Because of this. After castles, when the knight hops onto this square on d5, after queen a7, you don't even need to remove this bishop on e7. What if we try this magical c4? And even if you attack this bishop, just go on and remove b5. Taking the bishop on e4 is fine provided you capture this knight on c6, because you're now forced to get your bishop out of the way. But even with this situation arising, queen d4 solves every single worry white has. Once the queen on d4 is removed, only then the knight can eliminate this bishop, and since this comes in with a nifty check, after king c7, and now knight takes queen, the game is over. Coming back, Stockfish did not engage on f5, 
but went for castles instead. But what side do you think he castled? He went for long. And now Komodo opens up on g2 to prepare his bishop to get into the diagonal. Stockfish went for a king move. But was his move necessary? I think so because Komodo got his bishop not on g2, but on h3. And I hope this explains why the king made a move out of the light squares. This knight move to a5 was for sure preparing to go after the queen. But when e6 was removed, the attack on the queen had to wait just a bit longer. After this knight move, Stockfish was a bit restricted because the pressure on e6 was on. But this did not seem to bother Stockfish. The engine attacked the knight, and of course the only logical step was to retreat. And once the knight moved back to e2, Stockfish kicked in with this e5 initiative. And with this attack on the knight, not only the knight is threatened, but also both bishops. Komodo should have no problems here, and in fact, he has a few options at hand. One, he can get the knight into f5. Two, he can get the knight into e6. And three, he can simply take the bishop on d7. The dragon went for this last option, and when the rook recaptured, the knight got himself into f5, and this was the time for this knight to come in after the queen. Komodo went for this queen move, but maybe best was to go for d5 instead. I don't know. Since the knight on f5 has e3 very well covered, Stockfish will have to wait before he can apply any fork on e3. Okay, so after queen d3, the rook came into the game to cover this knight. And now the knight reroutes to c1 to try and come out to b3. a5 was strong enough to prevent the knight from using b3. But after the queen moved back, a4 kicked in, and this was going to be a very intense endgame. Komodo went for this rook move to d5. Explanation? I have none. Well, the only reason I can find is to stop the queen from gaining access to c5. What Stockfish went for after Komodo's rook move to e5, I also have no explanation. The engine went for this bishop move, but I can't really see why. After the rook lined up behind his queen, the rook on d7 also lined up behind his own queen. And right now, I'd rather have the black pieces. The knight on c4 is extremely powerful, and right now, there is no way to go after him. Forget b3, because this is going to be the end for white. Having nothing better to go for, the dragon pushed on with g4. Stockfish's queen move to c6 was the calm before the storm. After queen d3, Stockfish must have seen something and returned the queen to b6. And again, as a result of these last two moves, nothing really happened other than Komodo being able to push in an extra move through this g4. And now Komodo goes for h3. But why did Stockfish return the queen to b6 in the first place? Any ideas, anyone, in two, one, and pause. And this is the reason. He sacks the knight by coming in with a check. You do have to take, because if you don't, when the king moves out, when the knight hits on c2 with a follow-up check, when the king returns to b1, the rook is now going to drop, and you can forget it. So this explains the taking of the knight on a3. So how did Stockfish decide to go about it here? He used the power of b4 to attack the queen. But before we were able to move into this game any further, let's just look at how things would go if you take a3. A move that comes in with an auto check. We know king a1 is going to finish the game with a mate in one. So the only way to stop this mate is to now give up the knight on c1. Any ideas on how to continue from this point on? Whatever you do, do not take this knight. If you take this knight, after a recaptures, queen b4 going after the rook is going to get this rook out of danger. 
And if anything, this game is still going to be very close, but maybe with the dragon having a better chance. A2 may be the last trick in the book, but after the king moves back to A1, okay, the game is still slightly skewed in the dragon's favor. So if we just return to this move when the knight is offered on B3, rather than take him, if you use the same variation after queen b4 and rook e3, okay, okay, we can still have the knight removed. And even here, we still end up with the same variation as before. Now that we have seen what happens, stockfish used b4 to attack the queen, and when the queen moved to safety, stockfish uses a pin to take a3 with a check, and this game could only go in one way. So what are your thoughts right now with this position on the board? Let me freeze the diagram for a few seconds in case you need to absorb it. Is there any way Komodo can come out of this one in one piece? And if so, how? Well, with the mate in one on B2, there can only be one move. And this is what Komodo went for. He got the knight out to b3 and worried later. Stockfish captured the knight, and now when c3 recaptured, this rook on c3 was now in danger. The queen was not going to forgive him if he stayed there. Getting the rook out to f3 was a very playable move, and yet Stockfish keeps the tension and holds on to this very dynamic position by getting his rook behind his brother. And right here, and right now, this game is just pure magic. I've been looking at the possibilities, and there is nothing more beautiful than this type of endgame. First of all, the knight can easily remove d6, and though this move allows the rook to attack the queen, after this queen gets out to d3, you tell me what is going on. Bishop takes knight, it's going to get black as good as finished, because when the queen... I beg your pardon, when the rook comes in with a lethal check, okay, the queen has to go, but after this follow-up check and king to a7, even after this queen check, this game is not over by a long shot. So if we return to the game, we know this knight move to hit d6 works very well, yet Komodo tried something else. He went for this queen move, trying to force the pin on b5. Stockfish saw this and got his king out of the way. Rook d3 got the queen attacked, and once the rook moved into block, the rook returned to c3, maintaining both the tension and the pressure. Any ideas on how Komodo proceeded here? In two, one, and pause. What a fantastic knight jumped to e3, and now it seems Stockfish is in trouble. Because against any move, the engine is simply unable to prevent the knight from moving into d5. And once you allow this to happen, something has to give. And yet Stockfish has the answer ready to this worry. He gets his bishop active and right into h6. But did this stop the knight from moving into d5? Any ideas? No, of course not. And here is where I want you to stop the clip and sit down and think of how Stockfish went on. There is only one move and one move alone, so stop and try and find it. It is by no means a very easy one, so take your time on this one. And because this is probably the most taxi move of them all, just take not one, not two, but three attempts. Stockfish came in with Queen to d4, offering the queen, but there are so many things happening right now. Can we take the queen, guys? For sure you can, but be ready to be slaughtered, because after this rook check, after rook takes and rook recaptures, this game is over. And this is why the queen is untouchable. But even though we know the rook cannot go after the queen, what is there for the dragon? Komodo opted for this rook move, and that was Komodo's queen under threat. And what an end game. 
we have seen many end games, but this has to be, and how many times did I say this, this game has to be one of the best end games in history. With all the threats, and with both queens sitting in like lame ducks, Komodo went for it. He came in with a queen check, and when the king got out of danger, the queen removed what seemed to have been the biggest nightmare in the game. So what does this move do? And why was it important to remove a3? For starters, this spot on c1 is now covered, but the queen and stockfish can no longer use it to mate using the rooks and the bishop. But how on earth do we continue from here? With stockfish to move, he went on and used the bishop not only to protect his queen, but also attack the rook on e1. And if you think the situation calmed down, you do want to think again because this has to be the mother of all endgames. Is taking this bishop at all possible? In fact it is because after the queen recaptures, is there anything stopping this knight from going after the rook? No. But there will be a problem if you do not know how to capture this knight. If you use your king, provided you get the rook on c1, not only white is far better, but this game is his, because when everything comes off here, there is nothing going to stop these two passed pawns from making it all the way to the end of the board. Okay, at least one is going to make it, and that will be enough. But if you capture the knight with the rook, once this rook gets the hell out of here, we still need to be very careful where to place him on. Here on h1 looks fine, and this game looks very cool. But after this bishop moved to d2, the knight did go on to remove the rook, and though grabbing this knight with the rook is very playable, even here, Stockfish goes on for something else. He left the knight standing and went for this very sophisticated non-Cuban queen move, of course, leaving now Komodo in tatters. Coming out of this one, would actually be short of a miracle and would also probably need Houdini here to use all the magic he has. But I think Komodo did not need Houdini to handle his own problems. Again, I'm going to ask you to step in and take over. Can you find Komodo's next move? So here we go in two, one, and pause. Any ideas? Rook takes bishop, which is the only move in this position. And of course, Stockfish recaptured with the rook because it allowed to bring about a nice discovered check, forcing now the king to find the corner. A follow-up queen check got the king back. And now once the knight came off, this game was by no means over. I know what you're thinking, but a rook check simply doesn't cut it. In fact, go for this. And you're going to lose the game because once the king moves out, white has no more checks and he will lose the game whatever he tries. In this light, Komodo pushed on with b4 first, but still the king moved to a place where no checks could be given. Queen b3 got the king getting back to c7. And now with a3 and another king moved to c6, the queen came in to attack him. And once the king moved back to b7, this was very close. The queen had to return to get protected from the potential mate on b2. But after the rook went on to attack her, the entire idea was to try and entice the queen out of b3. And since f7 could be used, Komodo used it. After the king got out of this check, a move like this queen to c7, or even d7, is going to run into a mate through rook b3, and after the king temporarily escapes to c2, do you expect another queen check? And when the king lands on c1, boom, rook b1, and a check, and mating one. Maybe I should have said checkmate instead, but hey, we all know what I mean. Returning to the game, keeping the white queen on the diagonal is fine. But also fine is what Komodo went for, this rook move to c1. 
is a risky and bold move, but Komodo tried it. This move dropped E4, and now Stockfish was preparing to come in with a discovery, and this rook move to B3 looks very final, but it was Komodo to move, and the engine came up with the only answer to this worry, a check on the king for this move. Taking B5 is going to expose the king, but I'm not sure how Komodo can take this one away with him. Anyways, Stockfish did not take. But after this queen check, the king was now forced to take. And through the sequence of moves, the king was pushed all the way to the edge. The queen tried the check on a7. And though the king was imprisoned, after this queen check on d7, the game was drawn. What a game, guys. And what a magical ending. And this is what I call chess at its very best. We can't expect a better game than this. Okay, and then the draw. But those who say draws are boring, well, this one is not only not boring, but with these amazing variations, each engine demonstrated how things may not look what they are. When Stockfish sacrificed his knight, who would ever imagine this will be the result? Just remember, this game has to be probably the most fantastic game ever, and I named it as such just to be able to show it to you. Comments, ideas, and other stuff on this game are most welcome. Again, I shall be returning to the Top Chess Engine Championship very shortly, because these engine games are going to be ever more interesting. Stockfish is still leading the race, but the gap at the top is getting less and less. But the most important question still remains, can Komodo make a comeback? He has returned to win Fisbo and Skax and Heron, but there is a long way to go still. Okay, and on this note, many thanks for taking part in case you did, and many thanks for watching. Until next time, this was your Chess Puzzler.